saying that.
Good morning. Could I have your attention? I believe I've got it. Okay. The altar flowers are placed today to the glory of God in honor of Frances Phillips' 98th birthday on June the 16th by her loving family. Let's give her a hand. And um, I've got a note here that uh, there will be no jam kids for the month of June or July. We've got a lot of folks who are on vacation during that time, but they'll start back in August. So just want to let you know that that'll be for the summer break for June and July. We'll not have jam kids. Also, um, I was uh, approached by a couple different people, said that the youth met down at the lake on Thursday evening down at Shirley and Charles's place, and I heard from Charles that they were so great, had such a great time, and also heard from the youth that they had such a great time. So I'm glad that they could go down at Charlie and Shirley's, and uh, that is a nice place to go. So thank you guys for having our youth down there. Appreciate that. <laughs> there will be a Council on Ministries meeting today at 4.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Please attend and be part of our meeting to plan and bring new ideas for the upcoming months to build our church. And also, right after that, at 6 o'clock, we'll have the uh, administrative board meeting. That is at 6 o'clock in the fellowship hall. So all of you folks who are members of the board, please attend that. The school advisory board will meet in the fellowship hall on Monday, June the 13th at 7 p.m., all individuals with an interest in the school are welcome to attend. Women's ministry is going to have a meeting on June the 14th at 7 p.m. All ladies of the church are invited to meet with our women's ministry on Tuesday, June the 14th at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Our community outreach project is towels and washcloths for First Hope Ministries. Bring a friend and enjoy a wonderful evening of fellowship. And then we had a youth service project during va Vacation Bible School. The youth completed a service project and made goodie baskets for the shut-ins and those in need in the church. We have been studying how God is great and he is doing, he going to do great things through us and that he loves each and every one of us and we want to share the good things we have received from God. We know and continue to remind ourselves that we can be God's hands and help free others. The youth want to continue showing God's greatness and how good he is by providing for and praying for those in our church. If you have a family member or know of someone in the church who would appreciate a goodie basket made by the youth members, please reach out to Caitlin Barrier. And I think we have another announcement. Hang on just a Good morning. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Most of you know that at the beginning of this year, Center Church published a scripture-based calendar and it is designed to encourage people to learn scripture by heart and to be a tool for helping people who want to do so. And so we uh, have made this available, and most of you probably already have a copy, but if anyone doesn't, uh, be aware there are a few copies left out on the literature table near the office. And for those of you who worship with us online, if you do not have one of these calendars after God's own heart and would like to have one, all you have to do is contact the church office and we'll arrange for you to get one. The feedback we've gotten on this calendar has been so positive that the decision has been made that we will do another calendar next year. Those of you in the sanctuary have in your bulletins an insert describing what we're looking for. But we want this to involve as many people in the church as want to participate. And so this is an opportunity for you to suggest scriptures that will go into next year's calendar. And we suggest starting point only as, you know, what's your favorite Bible verse? Is there a scripture that has strengthened you when you face difficulties? 
And this is a particularly important category because a scripture that has strengthened you when you were having a hard time in the past may be exactly what the person over on the other side of the aisle needs to hear today. So be aware that you, out of your own experience, may actually be able to offer hope to someone else who needs it. And then, let's say hope is a really good feeling. And if there's a Bible verse that just makes you feel that way, just makes you feel like, you know, things are just can't be all that bad and so on, just lifts your heart whenever you think about it, uh, we'd like to know that too. So on the back of this form, there are some little places with lines. And you don't have to put verses that go with any of these categories. If you've got a better idea, go right ahead. You can also use plain old paper. You don't have to have this little form. And again, those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you would like to participate in next year's calendar project, you can mail suggestions to the church at Post Office Box 179, Welcome, North Carolina, 27374. So we will collect suggestions through the end of July and then we'll get busy assembling a calendar for next year and we hope that it will bless people as much as we have heard the current year's calendar has blessed people. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Are there any other announcements? Does anybody have anything else we need to bring up? Yes. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather today in your house to worship you. We thank you for all of our many blessings that you have provided. Thank you for all the children, parents, and volunteers that came together this past week to make a successful Vacation Bible School. May the lessons learned continue to enrich those who were involved. We pray for those who are sick and ask you for their healing. We also pray for the families who have lost loved ones and ask that you give them comfort and peace in the days ahead. Father, we pray for our nation and that you will be with our leaders and guide them in their decisions. Be with Pastor Wilson as he brings today's message and let it guide us in the coming week. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. And Doug, do we have music now? Okay. And him, the, um, the youth that attended Vacation Bible School are going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on. 
they so graciously consented to do this. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> so they're going to sing it through twice, and then I ask that the congregation join them on the third, the third time. Okay? So here we go. And you can remain seated for this. Lord, I lift your name. Let us remember our verse of the month at this time. Let us say together, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Exodus 28. Thank you. Okay, you're on. All right, good morning, everyone. I like to say that, too, even though you've already said that. Uh, I would like to just thank everyone who volunteered this week uh, to make this possible, because without volunteers, VBS, well, that's what the V might should stand for is volunteers, but if without them, we would not, would not be able to have Vacation Bible School, and it's wonderful to see all these kids here. We had 75 pre-K through fifth grade kids this week. And they learned all about some interesting stories, some that I'm not as familiar with. One of them, manna from heaven and quail, manna and quail, Elijah and the widow and the endless oil. Yeah, you see yourself. Um, also, Jesus feeding the 5,000, Jesus and catching uh, the catch of the day. And there was one more. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, it was a great week. I hope they were just as touched as I was. I know and that the kids, it's something that will stick with them for many, many years. And they're going to uh, show you the music and the hand motions. As a matter of fact, wait a minute, where is Angie? Did she run away? I think she did. I think she did. There she is. I do think that you should uh, show them the hand motions. Do you remember them? 
No. I bet these kids could do that. Yes. We can do that after the music. How about that? Good luck. Or you want to go? Let's go ahead and do it. Maybe we'll just go ahead. No? Well, this is... This is sign language. The kids did learn, in addition to all the motions that Miss Molly taught them with the music, they also learned hand motions to all the different phrases for the week, which were every day was a daily verse that they were able to do the hand motions to. All right, so enjoy the music. Let's just go ahead and do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I love it. Let's do all the hand motions. You all, y'all turn your eyes and ears and eyes on and learn it too. Not the, music, not the music yet. Not the music yet. Okay, here we go. There we go. Told you they knew it. Yes. No, you did. Yeah. Your name, how awesome is your name? Your 
Kingdom come, your will be done. Kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven. On earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Lead us not into temptation.
So many people gathered round to hear what Jesus had to say. And as the sun was sinking down, all of their bellies started to ache. They gave what they had, the Lord multiplied. There's more than enough, cause Jesus provided. Everybody ate their fill And they collected what was left The baskets overflowed With more than they had started with They gave what they had The Lord multiplied There's more than enough Cause Jesus provided And, well, I was actually jigging around. Well, what a blessing that's been for us, isn't it? You know, uh, kids, we can, we, can, we can come up to the level where kids are, but, but uh, and that, we need to remember that. That's a good place to be. What a heart they had. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. Here's, some, here's a thanksgiving. Kara Martinez... Uh, who was battling stage 3 Hodgkin's lymphoma, that's now in remission. So we're thankful for that. Isn't that wonderful? God is blessing in her life. Uh, we had a lot of folks in the hospital this week. J.C. Johnson had a heart procedure. He's doing better. Mike Craven, he came home. Uh, we need to pray for his continued recovery. Craig Schillinglaw, he came home this week after what, two months in the hospital battling this cancer, and uh, today we'll receive our love offering for that family at the close of the service. If you'd like to give to that, we'll, we'll make time to do that. Steve Long is also in the hospital. We want to pray for Steve. Uh, Randy Story was in the hospital. He came back home. So let's remember him. Wendy Talley had uh, cancer surgery this week. Let's continue to pray for her. 
Uh, Margaret Story will have the same surgery or something like it tomorrow morning. So let's remember Margaret. James Thompson's in the nursing home. Let's continue to pray for James and his dear wife, Mary Sue. Uh, Bill Mentor, Bill will be moving to Abbott's Creek tomorrow. So let's remember him in this transition. John Stilts was in the hospital as well. So let's pray for John's recovery and let's pray for Carol. Uh, she cares so much for him. So, a lot of needs. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then this morning. You have needs by uplifted hand. You just need us to pray about. Okay. All right. A lot of, a lot of needs. Father God, we thank you. Uh, Lord, every name in our prayer list is very precious to you. You know the struggles that some of those folks are going through, their families are going through. And we name these others. We thank you for answered prayer but we lord we know that uh, they have a battle and we pray for them we pray that you'd comfort them we ask lord you'd be with margaret tomorrow and be with her during this surgery bless their daughter as she cares for her dad and mom pray that you give her strength father we thank you that we celebrate the 98th birthday of miss phillips today and we pray you might bless her with many more years bless her health God, we ask that you just walk these aisles this morning. Bless the one to the left, the one to the right, the one in front of us and the one behind us. May we be attentive to you. May our faith grow. Father, we'll thank you for all you do. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we'll continue our worship as we return to God, his tithe and our offerings as our ushers come forward. February, um, I wanted to sing Scars in Heaven because I felt like this was a song that really touched, it touched a lot of people's hearts, like it has touched mine, um, just because of the words. And then, um, so I bought a CD, and I was going to sing it, and then the CD said that you could not sing it if it was going to be um, publicly streamed. So, um, Doug so graciously learned the song so that I could sing it this morning so um, and since that time my mother has passed away and I know a lot of you have lost loved ones too so um, I hope this song will just touch your heart like it has mine <laughs>
If you have your Bibles and would turn with me to Mark chapter 6, 1 through 6 this morning. Mark chapter 6, 1 through 6. Hear the reading of God's Word. Now, Jesus was in Capernaum last week when we was reading the text, and he's now heading to the southwest to his old hometown of Nazareth. Hear the Word of the Lord. Jesus left there and went to his hometown according, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's the wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. Praise you for your word. God, open our hearts that we might be filled with faith and step out in faith as your people. We might be the living representative of a people after your heart. Lord, I pray that you'd help me speak to us today beyond me and help us to grow from the message. And we'll thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I first met Philemon probably about... Uh, what in the world? Can we thank the Lord for our ushers? <laughs> Greg's a, Gre uh, well, whoever he is, he's a thief, the thief. He's had COVID twice now, and uh, he's done have it now, not today, but he's done been in quarantine, but the Lord's took care of him. He has had, he has had a time, so any of you think you can't get it, he's, he's, he'll prove you can get it. So, first time I met Philemon was, was probably 15, 20 years ago. Philemon was uh, uh, going to school at the seminary I was going to, and, and really he, he had a, a scholarship. He was from, from Kenya, and uh, I, I, I knew he had a large family, and I got concerned about him, and I was thinking that there's some kind of thing, something we could do as a church to help him. So I invited him to come one Sunday to our church, and, and so and share with them, and uh, what a time that was. But, but what, what opened my eyes, and it really would be months and weeks and years, uh, was the faith that that man had. Uh, I remember taking him, we were up toward Lake James, Bethel, remember, and Philemon was talking about how he was going to bring his family to America to live till he got out of school. Well, I knew he didn't have any money, and I, every time he'd start this stuff, I'd say, now, Philemon, you can't do that. And he would do th and do that to him. Shake his head, and, and that's, that's the way that went on. Well, it went on, to, to be honest, I felt really contentious toward him. Uh, but he had a great service that Sunday morning. People loved him and showed support to him. It was toward the end of the semester, so... I didn't really talk to, to him much. Uh, the next time I saw Philemon was, was, I don't know, a couple of months later. He was in a car driving it going down the main street of due west South Carolina where my school was with some little kids in it. He had brought his family here, and the Lord was taking care of them. My faith was so weak. And I remember one of the things he uh, uh, he would just teach us about faith and I just couldn't grasp it I really couldn't and I think in my own life the times I have missed the Christian walk because of faith because I hadn't exercised faith Hebrews eleven six says without faith it's impossible to please God now of all the things we do if I, we did a survey among us every single one of us would say yeah I want to please the Lord wouldn't I but faith, faith. We want to be analytical with everything. You know, we get we get the, the figures down, we get the map out of how we're going to lead go into the future, all and we seldom step out in faith, do we? And churches are worse at it, which the church is a people, isn't it? So I guess you we get all of us together, we really can exercise our faithlessness at times. Jesus goes into his hometown and he's preaching. At some point along the way, the people said, oh, where does he get these miracles? The wisdom he's got, where does that come from? Is, is, and then they jab at him. They said, oh, he's just a carpenter. And then the, the ultimate jab, it and this Mary's boy, and then names his siblings. Now we just read that and glance over it. In the Jewish culture to say that you're your mother's son and give your name of your mother that was a put down always put the name of your son your your dad this is 
like I'm Ronnie's boy. That's what they'd say from Maryland. So they jabbed at him. The Bible says that, that as Jesus was listening to all this and seeing it, it's interesting, then the only thing he says that's recorded is that he said a prophet, the only place a prophet will be without honor will be in his hometown. It's the only thing he says about it. He doesn't jump them because they're not honoring him. He deserved honor, didn't he? You know, so often we get caught up in this honor thing that we want to be recognized. We had a boy. Thank you. You did this. So and so did that. And we get caught up. In, we get caught up in that in the church. You know, got got to get recognized for all that kind of thing. But not Jesus. Then at the end of the the narrative I read you, it talks about how he says, or the or the Mark tells us that he could do. It's according to your translation. No mighty works there because of their unbelief. NIV says he could do only a few miracles because of their unbelief. What an indictment against the church. Isn't that something? They failed to be able to practice their faith. They failed to be able to practice their faith. How many times we miss so much because of our own spiritual blindness? Think about the times that we miss, uh, we're blind to, to the the great events that happen around us, and we don't see the hand of God and what God's leading. We, we miss the, the great truth that's around us. Those, those people miss the truth. They knew all the stuff about Jesus. They did. They could took a test about it. Yeah, he's from Nazareth, and, and they could list his brothers, his sisters, all that kind of thing. They could do all that. They knew all that. They knew the stuff, but missed who he was. And we can do that. I've heard people say before, and maybe you said, well, if I live back, I'd just love to live back in the times of Jesus and talk with him. You'd be just like them. You'd be just like them. They couldn't see Jesus. They knew facts, but they missed the spiritual truth. They couldn't apply their faith. How many times we miss the great opportunities in our life in ministry? The great opportunities we miss because we don't step out in faith. Remember, folks, faith is not something, it's not a, it's not a mental construct. It's not something we sit around and say, well, I'm, I'm faith, I have all kind of faith. No, faith is where it's an action. It's stepping out. It's stepping out in things that you can't imagine. It's, it's from... from you leading your family where you think they need to go, where you can't see how they are now, but you're leading them forward. It's your finances stepping out in faith. And it's the same thing with the church. We get so consumed with all the, the physical stuff. We think and manage oftentimes like the world manages. Instead of stepping out in faith and seeing what God wants to do with us. There's a great church that, that started a number of years ago. It's Christ Church down in Hickory. And, and when it started for a number of years, it was in, a, it was in, in the, another part of Hickory, uh, the Mountain View community, and it, it uh, was started by a pastor, and it just, it did grow some, but then it just stopped, and that's all it was doing, just stopping for years and years. Finally, they moved that pastor, they sent another one in, and you met Charles Kiker the other year when we had him come preach the revival for us. Well, uh, when Kiker got there, one of the things they did was, they came up with a mission statement. You know what the mission statement was for that church? To reach thousands for Jesus Christ. There wasn't a thousand people among them. Far from it. Barely over a hundred. And now they are. I think they got, I don't know how many campuses that they have now over Hickory and other parts of western North Carolina. But they had a heart to step out in faith beyond anything they could see or do. And frankly, build a building that I wouldn't have built. But it's functional and doing what it's doing for the kingdom of God, at least at the main campus and the other campuses too. That, that one of the things they do is they'll go in and they'll take a church and, and they'll, from the very beginning though, the deal is a church that's struggling, they go in and they talk to the leadership and the leadership is no longer the leaders of that church. And they seed people to go to that church and work in it for two or three years. Now, now you imagine how big that is. That's a big deal. If I ask, I want uh, eight or ten of your families to go off and 
go over, go to Arcadia. Go to Arcadia for two or three years and serve the Lord and go work over there and help those people. That's a big deal because we're giving up our people. We're giving not just our people, but, but their, their talents. We're giving up their finances. All that's going, isn't it? And imagine the family. You're taking your children out of a secure place. You're going to another place that you don't know anything about. And the crazy thing is there's people that in that congregation of the Christ Church, they feel that that's their ministry, to go and seed these other churches. I knew, I had a friend of mine that he felt called to do that to those churches. That's what they did. But it takes a stepping out in faith to go do that. I had a church one time, I'm telling you, everything you tried to do there, it was no, we can't do it. Just no, you can't do that. Just everything in the world, didn't matter what it was. It came up budget time, and I had a, and I'm not going to name the church, but it was budget time. I had a relative that went to that church. It was budget time, and it come talking about the pastor's salary, and they had some money. They had some money. Ah, uh, he's got enough. That's what it was said. They turned around within one minute later, or two minutes later, and gave several thousand dollars to the cemetery. Isn't that amazing? What a forward bunch of people. Right? Wouldn't you say that? Wow, what an amazing thing. They're meeting today. They're closing the church. Isn't that amazing? That just came to me last night. They're closing that church down. After that meeting, you know what they're having a meeting about? The cemetery. God help. And, and what, what the deal is, the church, they're going to give them the cemetery. The conference is going to give them the cemetery. Isn't it noble of them? And the church is going to bite it. Thank you for giving us a cemetery. Folks, they're not going to do nothing with that cemetery. You ain't got to agree to nothing to take the cemetery. The law won't let them tear it down the cemetery. You can keep up your cemetery. Churches all over this conference ought to say, No, you shut down, you keep the cemetery. Somebody say Amen. Because that sounds so backwards. Because that's mama out there, right? Grandpa out there. That's you still take care of that cemetery? All that sideline didn't cost you anything. But the church's vision now is in its past. Isn't that tragic? That's no faith in that. There's no faith in that. That's that just breaks your heart to think about that. Here they are. These people blinded by the opportunities, blinded by the very presence of the living God, and they miss all that. They miss who Jesus is. They're caught up in all that, and they can't move any for, forward any, any more in their life than that. Jesus sees all this, and what does Jesus say to them? All it says is Mark records that he was amazed at their unbelief. The word amazed comes up in another place. When they first met, see Jesus in the synagogues, they're amazed at his teaching. That's exactly what it says many times in the, in the, in the gospel, that the, the, the word amazed or marveled at his teaching. He taught not as one with the scri as the scribes and Pharisees. Amazed. And now Jesus is amazed that they don't have faith. Faith is so important. Faith is, uh, if you, in the text that we've worked on so far already in this, in this study, we've been talking about faith. Uh, you remember when Jesus, uh, this, this daughter was dying last week, he said, don't be afraid, only believe. Do you remember when Jesus was on the ship, the boat, and the disciples are scared to death it's going to get blown away and sink. What does Jesus say? He says, why are you afraid? Believe. Where's your faith? Faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she comes up behind, the hem of, behind Jesus, reaches the hem of his garment. And what does Jesus record about her? Your faith has made you whole. Faith is exercising. Faith is, is where it's stepping out beyond anything you can see and, and stepping out and doing it. That's faith. If you can see it, if you can perceive it, most likely that's not much faith to it. If you've got to get everything worked out, that's not any faith to that. God calls us to be a faith-walking people. 
in that Hebrews 11 verse 6 it's impossible to please God except by faith that follows a long li- or leads a long litany of people who in the Old Testament walk by faith it's called the hall of faith in the scripture all these people who walk by faith Abraham no way he could see the future that thousands are going to he's going to be a father of thousands and thousands of people folks he is an old man but he listens to God and follows him something he cannot understand but he still steps out in it faith is a lot like the bank you you you, you cannot make a di- you're not going to make much interest now but but keeping the money under your mattress you don't get anything do you you don't get anything you put it in the bank you get just a little bit but you're not going to get nothing if you keep it under your mattress right unless the banks collapse and who knows but what good's the currency if the government falls there's nobody to back the money so well, what a mess that is where's our faith where's our faith faith is stepping out it's believing it's it's the unseen it's beyond us it's beyond our comprehension it's beyond our strength it's beyond our ability that's what faith is and that's what God's called us to be wouldn't it be a terrible footnote in history if if uh, t- 10 20 years from now that they made at your church and they're talking about closing it and it's all because your people lack faith to move forward in life for the Lord and that'd be a terrible side note and well they got some money in the bank to mow the cemetery good lands what a legacy we're the church with the cemetery I had a church one time they were known as the pumpkin church in Greensboro this old woman one time in our church she looked and she said I don't want our church to be known as the pumpkin church and I don't think anybody else grasped it what a terrible legacy where is our faith where's our faith are we stepping out in faith you see you have to exercise faith to get faith right you see these big linemen on TV or over at North Davidson they they don't get to be that big by going and eating Big Macs all the time and just sitting watching television they don't it's called exercise they lift weights to grow in faith you have to exercise faith heard a story this past week Beth Beth said you all have prayed so and you know this blesses my heart as as a as a part of this church Beth Beth's aunt's been sick for a good while and y'all been praying about her and you know it's it's crazy different ones of you have come up to me and they don't just you, some of you ask about Beth's aunt but you say how is Janice and that tells me you've been praying for her you know and then some of you said that to me and that's just such a blessing. Well, she went to be with the Lord. We prayed for healing. Well, she, she was healed a little before, uh, on Friday night before midnight. She was healed. So she's well today. So we thank the Lord for that. Uh, well, you know, you have to exercise. I don't know why I went that way, but you've got to exercise your faith. I heard, I, while I was with the family, this, this relative said that they have a bus ministry and they bring people into their church. And that there's one guy, he's, all, he's always high, high as a, as a Georgia pine. He just, and he's just out of it. And, and said he always is there. They bring him in, then he goes, and can't really talk to him. He's out of it. The other week he came, about two weeks ago, and he talked to the preacher. He was, he was sound. His mind was clear. He wasn't on anything, no dope. Mind was clear, and he was talking to the preacher. And the preacher was talking about to him about how to come to Christ. And he wouldn't do it. The next week he committed suicide. See, you have to exercise your faith. Your faith. Are you exercising your faith? Or are you just sitting back doing the intellectual thing? Well, how's that working out for you? What does that do for you? I can take you to that church I'm talking about they always did that intellectual thing and they thought 
they were always blinded by who they were and they didn't welcome other people because, well, they were educators, most of them in the church, and so they didn't want to be like any of these other folks you know, above them. I guess they are. Now they're, they're gone. How did that work out? They missed who they were supposed to be. They missed opportunities. Heard a great story, and I'm closing. This, this woman, she wrote this, this uh, book called, and it's, it's old, Mothering from Your Heart, and I just read an excerpt from it, and one of the things that she talks about is when she moved from Reno to Portland. Well, I think that'd be a pretty big cultural shock, don't you? To move. In fact, what I see now, there ain't no way. They couldn't pay me to move to Portland. But from Reno to Portland, so she does. She's got a little girl that's going to go into the second grade. So this is a big deal. Your child's going to go into another school, a whole new place. I mean, you know, you know that it's got children, how that just works on your nerves, right? And so here th th they finally get over into Portland, and they start praying. They, her and her little girl, every night they're praying about this school, her teacher, and making friends. All oh, this is a big point of prayer. And they left a little girl named Kristen that lived back in Reno. That was her best friend. They were joined at the hips, the precious little girls. And so they're, they're just, so anyway. One night, the little girl says to the Lord, Lord, I want a friend named Kristen. And the mama opens her eyes and looks at her and says, I know about this. I was thinking about, you know, I, we need to learn about prayer. Well, okay, well, it'll, it'll pass. Next night, the little girl, same thing, same routine. Lord, I need a friend at school named Kristen. And that goes, and that's going on nightly, going on nightly. Well, the mama, she don't really know how she's going to deal with this because how she, she's going to be disappointed she don't get this little friend named Kristen, right? And so she... She keeps wrestling with how she going to deal with this little girl. And one night, the little girl says, Lord, send me a friend named Kristen with long brown hair. Oh, brown hair? What are you getting at? And so the little girl keeps praying that stuff. Finally, Mama, it's, it's getting close to school time, right? And the, the mom looks at the little girl and says, Now listen, I need to talk to you about prayer. Said, now sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers like we want. Those are, she said, You understand now, you, you may not get a friend named Kristen at school. Mm -hmm. Said, and she might not have brown hair. Okay, so you, you're not going to be disappointed now. Next night they go praying, Lord, send me a friend named Kristen with brown hair. Oh my goodness. Well, they get to school, they get there early, they get in the desk, the teacher tells them to look for the desk, it's got their names on it. So they find the little desk got the name Kristen. Uh, not Kristen. They find the desk with, with her little girl's name on Okay, that's where she's going to sit. She sits down. Mama sits down beside her. And they're just sitting there and they're talking about things. And the bell rings. So here comes kids in. Wouldn't you know it? First one's in. There are a couple of boys. And there she is. Beautiful, blonde-headed little girl. And the mama thought, oh, my. The little blonde-headed girl sits on the other side of the room crowd keeps coming in. About everybody's in the room. Here comes a little girl in. Sits down at the desk beside her. Mama looks over. Her name is Kristen. And she's got brown hair. Well, you say, that's a coincidence. Maybe, maybe not. I think it's a little girl who was trusting the Lord. Little kids teach us more about prayer than we ever teach them. And somewhere along the way, we quit letting them believe. You get like us. You like us. That begins to get washed away. Let me say this about your prayer life. Begin to do this. Be specific with God. How many times have you had something that God did for you and you're thinking... I wish I'd prayed about that. Has that ever happened to you? Happened to me all the time. Does that ever happen to any of you? Yeah, it does to me too. And I think, why didn't I pray about that? Why didn't I pray about that? I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm going to be like the mom in a minute. I don't know how God's going to answer your prayer. But be specific with God about your prayer. Be specific. Write it down. 
Open yourself to see what God does with your prayer life. It may be that you quit praying for a friend named Kristen and you quit praying for a little brown-haired girl. You start praying for God's will to be done. You might be amazed what God does with your prayer. Will God look at you and be amazed at your prayer life? Let's pray together. Almighty God, we don't know what you're doing in our life. You're doing things far greater than we can ever imagine. We've got you all in a little box, Lord. We've got it all figured out. Well, God, we've got to confess that we don't have nothing figured out. And there's things that we are going through, our family is going through, and it's just tough. But Lord, help us to trust you that your will, your mighty will could be done. And Lord, may people come by this place a hundred years from now and talk about a church of faith a people that walks in faith. Lord, help us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we close our service? Let us sing I'll Fly Away. And this is really fast on this CD. Receive this blessing as you fly from this place. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. May the grace of Heavenly Father go with you. May Jesus give you peace in your heart. May the love and joy of Christ be shared with others. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen.